Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we have a very interesting video for you. Uh, we have uh, the primary weapon we're going to be looking at are going to be the new CZ Bren 2 MS carbine and pistol. But we're going to give you a little bit of a background into Czech Small Arms post-World War II development. Um, the Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic uh, has been a very well, going back in their history, going back hundreds, hundreds of years, have been an arms manufacturer in that region. And they've always made very, very high quality firearms. Uh, and they've managed to take care of themselves. They haven't had to depend on a foreign uh, government uh, or, or foreign country to provide them with small arms. Uh, my you know, CZ or Czechos or Czechos, uh, no, we're not, I'm not even going to try that. But uh, CZ is the main manufacturer within the Czech, within the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia. Again, we have, and then Czechos that we had a split between Czechoslovakia and Slovakia. So now we have Czech Republic and Slovakia. Uh, both of them still use very, very similar weapons. Uh, the Czech Republic uh, had been much further because they had had the, they had the CZ plants right in, uh, in the Czech Republic, so they are more advanced, and as we're going to find out in a little bit, uh, how their move to want uh, to move to NATO uh, totally changed their small arms production, their capabilities, and their types of weapons that they would produce. So we're going to talk a little bit about their uh, particular type of ammunition because they had chosen to go their own way versus the Russian uh, their Russian uh, allies. As you know from the, from the Soviet Union, uh, in, in 1943, they adopted the 762 by 39 millimeter cartridge. It was very well known that they were progressive in modernization of their military small arms. And many of their satellite countries uh, from the Warsaw Pact, they had given technical data packages so they could produce AK variants. Now, the Czechs went a little bit their own way. Uh, they obviously were never happy about being ruled by the Soviet Union, and they also had very independent uh small arms manufacturing and design capability. They had decided that the 762 by 39 was not powerful enough for what they wanted. They wanted a little bit more. They developed what was referred to as a 7.62 by 45 cartridge. Now this would give you an extra probably 100 yards of velocity and definitely give you some more penetration at longer ranges. And this was designed around their new CZ 515, 522 weapons platforms. Now the CZ 515 and the 522 were very much interim firearms. They really never went anywhere. They never left the prototype stages, but they were sort of the first rifles that were to chamber the new Czech uh, 760i 45 cartridge. Now the CZ 515 was a open bolt. Uh, it was an open bolt and it held uh, 25 rounds. It was an external piston. Uh, it was, uh, you know, I had two triggers. It had one trigger for semi, one for fully automatic. And obviously, uh, there was, you know, having open bolt in, in an assault rifle is generally not a good idea. Generally, an open bolt is better left for belt fed machine guns or crew serve type weapons. So, with the development of the CZ 522, it took that rifle. It still left it with the with the two triggers, but it was fired from a closed bolt. Also, the gas system on the ZZ515, the gas system was very much like you have on an AK, where it sits on top of the barrel. Where on the CZ522, it was it was below in the barrel. So those were more uh, interim developmental type weapons. It was never anything that was actually produced. So now we're going to switch over to the CZ52. Now, the CZ-52, or the VZ-52, uh, was always referred to as the Czech Republic's or Czechoslovakia's SKS. However, uh, mechanically, it had nothing to do with it. Uh, it was very similar in style, meaning it had a detachable box magazine, but it was chambered in the 762 by 45 cartridge. Um, actually, the operating system is very unique, but that's more of a, that's more of a talk for another video. Um, the rifle was adopted, uh, and it was, it, was, it was very successful until the Russians came in. And the Soviets decided to tell them that, you know, your new cartridge is pretty, pretty nice, but uh, change it. So basically, they were forced to change to the 762 by 39 And at that time, we had the development going on of the VZ-58. Now, the VZ-58 uh, was a completely Czech-designed firearm, and as much as it looks like an AK, it really has nothing to do with an AK. You're looking at a short-stroked uh, type of operating mechanism. You have a, uh, a facilitating block or a locking block, very similar to that of a, of a uh, Beretta or a, P or a Walther P38 in the way the mechanism works, where basically a striker-fired type mechanism. We do have a 30-round magazine. There's no parts on here that are interchangeable with that of the, uh, the, the AK-type family of weapons. Now, these had been uh, produced in decent numbers, and these were found in other countries. In fact, our, our troops did encounter these in, in Vietnam throughout the Vietnam War, 1962 through 1975. These were, these were found there. We're going to take a little bit of a look at this on the inside, uh, just to give a little bit of a familiarity with it to show us the progression uh, of, the, of the Czech firearms. Magazine release on the bottom. 
Now, the magazine is very unique compared to that of an AK because on an AK, uh, you do have rib on the rear. However, the rib on the rear here allows you to have a bolt lock open. The VZ58 has a bolt lock mechanism, which is what's hidden inside of this rib. So on its last shot, it will, it will lock to the rear. There's no manual release. You physically have to pull the bolt back to release it. But that's why when you look at the, the VZ58 magazines are very uh, unique and they're very noticeable because you have this large rib on here, which gives you that capability. So when we look at the top, we see we have uh, a top cocking handle. Your safety is located on the right side, as you can see. Uh, this, this is actually safe in summer, but you also would have a, an automatic position. Now, the early VC-58s had a wooden stock. Uh, the wood stock was uh, very quickly replaced by what you see here is like a Bakelite uh, type, po type polymer. And a lot of people say that, you know, wood's the way to go. Well, the reality is, is uh, the switch over to going to the synthetic materials had a lot to do with wood uh, how, that would swell uh, in, 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 in humid environments. Uh, it would splinter and it would crack where you didn't have that issue with, uh, with the polymer. Uh, and many of these polymers were just as strong. Uh, so you would definitely see that switch over going from the wood stocks to the, the polymer stocks. And again, this is what you would see normally. You also did have a side folding version of this. So let's take a little bit of a look in the inside to, sh to show you just how unique this rifle is. Now we push uh, the takedown lever from the rear and all from the left uh, to the right. We pull that out. As we push in and lift out, we are going to see that we have two springs. Now the top spring would be your recoil spring, and the bottom spring would be for your striker or for your, for your firing pin. And that's all comes out as one unit. Now when we look at the striker mechanism, we can see very much how that works. When you, cock the, when you cock back and push forward, you can see that we have the firing pin or the striker that's in the in the, uh, open, in the, you know, in the ready to go position. When you pull the trigger, that allows the striker to move forward to strike the cartridge. That's controlled by the the firing pin spring that we see down there. So when we go to disassemble this, we have to make sure that we have that in the proper position to lift right out. So we're gonna set the bolt aside and then we're gonna take a look at the, the, the gas system. We lift the handguard right out, and now we have exposed the short stroke operating mechanism. Now, of course, we can pull that out, lift it up, and we can remove it. There's nothing very special about it, but it is not the long stroke that of the AK. Now, we want to take a look at this bolt because this is extremely interesting. Right here, we can see the bolt, how this is straight across here. This would be, this would be in the unlocked position. As the bolt moves forward, the locking lugs would engage the receiver, now put it into the lock position. So we would have locked, unlocked. And the system here would lift right out. Before we can lift that out, we do have to remove the, uh, pull, you know, not remove it, pull back on the striker. And then this all will lift right out into, two, into its, uh, its three pieces. So it's very, it's very, uh, it gives you a very unique uh, type of a recoil system, very much of somebody who's used to shooting a Browning type uh, system in a pistol versus a Beretta or a P38. You have a very different type of a recoil the way that it's introduced to you. So we wanted to give you just a really a, a quick overview. Now this one does have a chrome line barrel. Um, this one here is one of the ones that's made by Checkpoint. These rifles have been very, very popular in the United States uh, as they were introduced. Now, Checkpoint does a very, very beautiful job. This originally came with a black synthetic stock, which uh, we got rid of that quickly. I actually want to put a call out to Michiko. William has really gotten me to have an, more of an appreciation for a lot of these more foreign uh, type weapons, these more older style weapons. Uh, so uh, he originally sent me this rifle as a, just as a loaner, and uh, I ended up not being able to live without it. So I got this about, uh, oh, I'd say four years ago from him. And I've definitely enjoyed shooting it. Um, definitely have to say that the, the people in the Czech Republic are definitely must be small in stature because uh, the way this rifle was designed, um, it's very short. It's designed for people who are, who are small. Um, we'll take a look at that once we get this back together. Again, we can see very clearly uh, the way the striker is on here. Now for reassembly, we're going to pull the trigger. We're going to push that striker in. Now we got to make sure that we get uh, each spring into the right hole. Top spring for the recoil spring, bottom spring for the striker. Push that right in. Lock it forward. And we're ready to go. 
So when we take a look at this, uh, you look at somebody like myself who was relatively large with long arms. This is really, this is really up up close for me. It's a, uh, it's very, it's uh, it's extremely short. But I gotta say, when the recoil goes, it's nice. It's a very well made rifle. So now we're going to move forward to 1977. Uh, as 1977 came, the VZ-58 was in service, and the Soviet Union had now done the switch over in 1974 to the 5.45 cartridge case. So it was time for them to upgrade the VZ-58. So a new product, a new project was put on was called the Lada. The Lada basically was a new check firearm that was going to be chambered in the seven or the five, the new 5.45 by 39. Now, when you look at it, it had far more AK to it. Uh, it had the long stroke. It was more. It was much more of, of what the Soviet type was. So the rifle was tested in 1985, and it was looking to go into production in 1986. But now we had some issues with the fall of the Soviet Union that was uh, we were just on the brink. We also had uh, they had issues in, Czech, in the Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia at the time uh, with finances, and the rifle really did not move forward. So 1990 came, uh, we, there was still a problem with money. Then in 1993 was the breakup of the Soviet Union and was the breakup of the, Czech, or the Czech, Czechoslovakia into two countries. Now, the new Czech Republic, they wanted to join NATO. That was uh, one of the primary things they wanted to do. And when looking at the new Lada-type rifle, uh, it pretty much would be impossible for them to make that a NATO standard-type rifle while utilizing a Stenag magazine using a M16-type magazine. So the pro the project was dropped. Now the production of that rifle was not, although it was for the for the Czechoslovakia and Czech Republic, it was no longer a rifle. Um, Czech Republic did offer he did did offer it as a uh, as a export type weapon that was referred to as the CZ two thousand. In two thousand five, an entirely new weapons program was was looked it was looked at by the, by the uh, Czech Republic. They wanted a 5.56 modern rifle, uh, and that was getting completely away from the AK type and the uh, VZ58 type weapon system. Uh, all new redesigned uh, as the CZ805. Uh, started off as the CZXX to the CZ805. Two rifles were entered. You had an A and a B. The A was designed in 5.56, and the B was designed in 7.62 by 51. We have the CZ805 commercial carbine which is almost identical to that of the CZ-805, which was introduced uh, to the Czech Army. Now, during the uh, trials, there were trials that was not just Czech weapons. There were 27 weapons that were introduced as a proposal for the new Czech weapon, and there was two finalists. It came down to the CZ-805 and the Scar Light. Now, looking at, this, looking at the two guns, there are a lot of similarities. We do have a video where we do a comparison directly between the, uh, the Scar-16S and the v and the. Uh, the Bren 805. The guns have a lot of similarities, yet they have a lot of differences. But something else you really have to think about is Czech designed, Czech manufactured. Uh, CZ and, and Bruno uh, have manufactured weapons for the Czech military uh, for many, many years. It is always a better idea to have your uh, weapons production, production uh, in house and in, within the country. Uh, in March 2010, there were 6,687 uh, 805 Bren A1 carbines ordered, and that was with a 14-inch barrel. Then you also had 1,250 805 Bren, Bren A2s, which was the 11-inch uh, barrel. 11-inch barrel was primarily uh, lightweight carbines for you know non-frontline troops. So we're going to take us a, a good look at this rifle. There were several requirements that were put out, and instead of going over the requirements, the, you know, our, our real uh, focus is going to be on the Bren 2, but it's very important to see where they came from and where they move forward because the Bren 2 really is a lessons learned rifle uh, from this rifle being in service. There was a lot of things that were corrected on it. So we're just going to go over this rifle a little bit. Now, starting on the rear, we have the polymer stock of the 805. There's a couple different versions of this. This particular one was a telescopic and side folding. Um, these were issued in, in the, within the Czech Army, but also were eventually replaced with a side folding only just because of durability issues. 
Now, very much like that of the, of the SCAR, you have an aluminum one-piece upper receiver and you have a, a polymer lower. And we're going to start taking a look at the polymer lower uh, right now because it's a very interesting aspect of the rifle. Now, as you can see, the magazine is not Steneg. This magazine is actually that of the G36 rifle, a uh, 30 round magazine. Now, as this rifle came into the United States, it was issued with a magazine well for the Stenag magazine. It took the standard GIM 16 type magazine. Uh, of course, when I got this, uh, I wanted to replace it with the original uh, setup, which was the original G36 magazine, because this is how it was used. Now, this is a standard Czech magazine. Magpul even makes a magazine for this as well, uh, and it took regular German magazines. So we have a reciprocating charging handle on this one. And to disassemble, we have two pins. Now I had replaced these pins. These are standard uh, type removable pins on the other original rifle. These were K and S pins that were designed uh, for easy removal and to be a lot more durable. So we push in on the button, push out. Now we're able to remove the pistol grip. So I really don't want to center on this at the moment. Now, as we previously stated, it had come with the 5.56 Denag type uh, magazine wall. Just by popping out the pin, because this was drilled and drilled and pinned in place with a polymer pin, this just slides off and, and drops into place. Now we have uh, polymer. The pistol grip uh, was a note of contention when I got it because with having larger hands, the thinner pistol grip was very uncomfortable. So we had a removable uh, back removable back strap. The one on here is the larger one. This is a standard that came on here. We have a steel um, amid extra safety. Now this is the one of the things I want to talk about because we're going to be seeing this coming up with the Brent too. The trigger on this rifle, it was absolutely gorgeous. This has probably one of the best standard uh, military grade triggers I have ever seen. Uh, it's very uh, unique. It's not that of an AK or it's not that of an SKS. It's not that of an AR-15. It's a unique design to the rifle. All steel, but wow, I, I have to say it probably is one of the best triggers uh, that I have ever seen. We do have a uh, bolt, uh, bolt lock. Uh, the last magazine it will lock open in the last shot. However, we do not have a manual bolt release. We do have, uh, if you wanted to lock it open, you could push the button and, and lift up. Uh, so we do have we do have that. But when it locks open, the only way to release is to is to physically pull the charging handle back and release it. This assembly of the stock relatively simple. We have a button in the rear. We push in, and that slides down. We're going to pull the awkward the recoil spring out and. To remove the, the bolt handle, we go back to the, the notch, lift out, and here we go. Now we're going to look at another issue that had come up uh, with the Bren 2 that was a correct that was a correction and a major correction. Is the 805 was designed, it was designed so it was not to be taken apart by the average soldier for maintenance. Due to the fact that it was an external piston, they felt that the rifle would remain clean enough where they could just wipe it down. So you were not able to remove the firing pin to disassemble for field stripping, unless you were an armor. And that's, again, that would be a major issue that would come up with the, with the, the, the two. Now, we take a look at the design on here, almost exactly that of the uh, FN SCAR, but even more importantly, that much, it's a, a design of the AR-18, or AR-180 done by Armalite back in the 60s. Uh, which many modern rifles uh, adhere to today. Now looking at the receiver, the standard receiver uh, for the Czech Army had 1913 rails on the side, and we have Manta rail grips on here, which we do have a 20% off on their, on their website. So you enter our code SAS20, you'll be able to get a 20% off of everything on the Manta website. So now we're gonna take a look at the operating system. We do have an adjustable gas system in the front. As we push that in, we can we rotate. Pull that out just like so. So what we have is a short stroke, adjustable gas valve. We have your valve right here. And as we can see, we have a, a standard and an adverse condition. 
Um, military versions of this would be available for suppressed and unsuppressed. You can see our vents we have on the side here to, to vent unused gas. The barrel, if we see we have a very much thin pestle profile barrel, very similar to that of the SCAR as well. I wanted this to be a lightweight type rifle. Cold hammer forged and chrome plated. Like any military grade weapon that we see, we have we have chrome plating, not nitride. Nitride is not acceptable for any military sales that I have seen. Uh, you're getting sort of the best of all worlds. Now, of course, the muzzle device that this came with is uh, very similar to what we're going to be seeing on the Bren 2. It was basically a muzzle break. I got rid of it immediately. Um, the muzzle blast and the noise that, that created uh, was uh, ungodly. It was unnecessary. So what I put on here was a standard uh, M16A1 birdcage type. Reassembly, very, very simple. We're going to drop our piston mech onto our operating rod. We can see that we have a standard piston. There's no gas rings on here, which tends to make these guns have to be a little bit more on the over gas system. We see our, our, our return spring. Put it on the flat and our plunger. Two positions. So now we're going to take our bolt carrier group again, uh, which is not able to be disassembled. Now we can put this uh, charging handle on either left or right hand side. I tend to like to put this over onto the left hand side. Uh, I will say that uh, when I first got this, there was a beautiful KNS Precision one. Uh, there was a much easier handle for me to use that I put on here. And for some reason, after firing maybe, say, 500 or so rounds, I was starting to get uh, galling on the receiver. Uh, and they had, I talked to the guys over KNS, and they were saying that in some rifles, the way things could be uh, machined, the part could not line up properly. So I ended up putting in the original one back in. So we're going to take our recoil spring, turn it from the rear. Stock will just slide right back into place. Slide right back into place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pistol grip assembly, drop it into place. Insert our pins. And there you have it. Now, this carbine, it's, it served very, very well within the Czech military, but there was some reliability issues that they had seen, and there were some other issues that they wanted to correct. Uh, it was also a relatively heavier rifle. Looking at some of the specifications, we're looking at, uh, again, 5.56 caliber with a 1 and 7 inch twist barrel. We do have a half by 28 threads on here, so we are able to uh, suppress. You're looking at 8.43 pounds uh, with uh, AB safety. And the magazine, again, uh, for, on, the, on the commercial models uh, for which the United States were the Stenag magazine, as we see here. Military use was always the, was always the, uh, the G36 type magazine. And again, this is the commercial rifle that was produced. These were no longer available now. They came in this and then they came in flat dark earth. Um, as fast as easy you could get them into the country, they had them. There was also a requirement uh, for 922R for American-made parts. Uh, to make it legal and some of those parts particularly were the stock and uh, there's some more of the internal parts to, to meet the requirements.
So now we're going to forward to the development of the Bren 2 8L5. In October 2015, there was an urgent requirement for an upgrade to the 8L5, which was the introduction of the 806 or the Bren 2 program. Now, the Czech Army had been involved in, in the global war on terror. Uh, they had had trips in both in, in Iraq and in Afghanistan. In fact, uh, when I was in, at Bagram in Afghanistan, we had a, there was a compound of, uh, of Czech soldiers. Uh, and they were all issued with the, with, well, at that time they were still issued with the 805, but there was a, a, a need for an improvement. Now, we see two rifles here, uh, both of which are commercial. We have uh, the 80, the Bren 2, uh, which is the new carbine that's manufactured uh, for commercial use. And then we have what's referred to as the pistol. Now, as this rifle came, as I bought this rifle, this had come with out of stock, it was a pistol. Um, so we SBR'd this, and now we have the proper stock on it. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, the rifle that we see here is pretty much identical uh, in, in every way to the current issue rifle that's utilized by the Czech Army with a 14-inch barrel. Uh, of course, you do have the shorter barrels as well that are used more by special forces and more uh, of people who need shorter rifles. Um, the biggest, the only real difference between this and the and the actual rifle is the handguard, and we're going to talk about the 2M and the 2MS uh, type handguards uh, in a minute. As I said, this one came with uh, was as a pistol, and we put a pistol brace on this. Uh, and so we got uh, it registered as an SBR, then we were able to put the original parts on it, and we're going to talk about the 922R parts kit, but we're going to talk about what makes the Bren 2 the product improvement. Starting at the rear, uh, a change was made to the stock to make the stock much more much more durable than the when it was on that of the 805. We do have telescopic as well as side folding. And of course, when it's, uh, when it's folded, it locks in place with the uh, fire cartridge case deflector, and this can be fired uh, very easily and without any obstruction uh, when, the, when the stock is in a closed position. Now, most of the major major changes came to the lower receiver. Uh, with, the, with the adoption of the Stenag magazine, instead of utilizing the G36 magazine, now we use the standard M16, M4 type Stenag magazine. Now, this particular rifle, this is a Czech-produced magazine, which is polymer. Uh, the Czech military was using magazines that were manufactured by DNH Tactical aluminum magazines. But uh, the commercial pistol was, uh, was sold with this magazine, which was uh, 556 and 300 blackout. Now, looking at the lower receiver, we have a much stronger material. It is one piece. We still have the same kind of pistol grip with a removable uh, back strap, but it's not the same, unfortunately. Uh, in the U.S., uh, we've been unable to find the, the larger back straps. I continue looking. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart, and we're going to go over these part by part. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart, and we're going to show you some of the major changes from the 805 to the Bren 2. comes apart very much in the same way. And this is where we're going to start, because this is where a lot of the work was done. Instead of having that of a two-piece uh, lower receiver like we had on the 805 that would switch off uh, magazine wells, this was not designed to take the G36 magazine, but we do have an insert. This will take an insert to allow it to take a 7.62 by 39 millimeter magazine. Now, it is not using an AK-type magazine. It's using a proprietary magazine that was manufactured by uh, CZ for this this particular this, this rifle. Um, it snaps up into place like that of a uh, of a of an M16 M4 Stenag magazine, but we also have a much uh, shorter front on the magazine well, so we can have that more of that constant curve to give that feeding reliability. Now, unlike the 805. We now have a paddle like that of the M16, so we have a bolt lock and release on the left-hand side. Well, that also gives you a bolt lock and release on the trigger guard. So if we notice, we push upward on the lock. This is very similar to that of a foul. It locks the bolt, we pull down, and it releases it. So we have uh, basically an ambidextrous version of the, of the bolt catch, bolt release. But those who are familiar with the M16, they have that uh, paddle. We do have an ambidextrous magazine release as well. Now, the safety. The safety is ambidextrous. It's polymer. It's not nearly as nice as what is found on the 805. I do have to admit, and it's also a lot louder. The trigger. The trigger has definitely had some changes that were made to it. Uh, it's a little bit more spongy. Uh, in my opinion, the Bren, the Bren 2 trigger is not nearly as nice as the 805. The 805, that is really where that shine, that, tr that trigger was very, very nice. So one piece, improved material, uh, set up for Stenag magazine. We'll take a, an insert for a 762x39, fully ambidextrous. 
um, you know, bolt release, magazine release. Now we'll take a look at the stock. Very similar to uh, the 805, we push in, we drop down, and we have the stock. Again, very well made. We have a, a movable cheek piece. Uh, we have complete uh, adjustability, uh, which gives you a lot of benefits because uh, a lot of troops we find who wear body armor, that's why you have to have these short stocks. Back in the days before we had the body armor, we could have the full length rifle stocks. It was not a problem. They could use them now with the body armor that's so thick, you need to have shorter stocks available to you. Next place, there was a major change. We have a non reciprocating charging handle. So we're going to remove the recoil spring. The non reciprocating charging handle was a major, major benefit. Pull out like so. Also worked as a forward assist. So as we stated before, the 805 was the, the bolt carrier group was not able to be taken apart for maintenance by the soldier, and that was a major complaint by the by the Czech Army and by the soldiers uh, for maintenance. That was all changed. Now, we just drop out our plunger. We do have a firing pin lock on here. We depress the firing pin lock. Now we're able to remove the firing pin with the firing pin spring. We have a cam pin that we pull right out, and then we have the bolt. Now you do not you do, you do not remove the extractor on here. That's the part that uh, the way this is put into place. You don't really want to remove that. Uh, we have a we have a very strong bolt. We have peening on here that uh, prevents you from inserting it uh, the cam pin in the wrong position. And then you have your bolt carrier. You know, you still look at these and say, you know, this this is the original uh, Gene Stoner AR-18 design, uh, the way the bolt carrier works. Same for the SCAR, same for the, the uh, G36. Um, it's, uh, it is based on the G the AR-18 is basically uh, the father of most everything that we see today in modern combat rifles. Reassembly, insert the bolt back in. Now we want to make sure that uh, the extractor is on the right side. We drop the cam pin straight in. Now again, we have to be sure that when we insert the firing pin, we make, we keep the spring on there and we want to press in on the latch, on the lock, so it can slide into place. All the way in. And uh, we drive from uh, left to right. And here we have the bolt carrier group. Now looking at the receiver, Again, we have a steel receiver. Now we're going to start talking about the 2M versus the 2MS. Um, this, the 2M, 2MS is more relevant for the commercial rifles, and what we're going to talk about now is uh, as a commercial as well as a military. The original 2M is what you're going to see photographs of that shows that the upper receiver was one piece. So on the 2M it would be the military configuration, the first few rifles that were shipped into the country. Um, where you had one piece receiver and you had uh, 1913 rails that were available on the on all three sides plus one going from uh, front to rear. The two uh, the two MS was referred to as the modular handguard, uh, and what that referred to is you could remove the handguard, as you can see the one we have on here is M lock. Uh, we're gonna get more into that in a, in a little bit. I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, the gas system on here. Now the gas system that you have on here is very similar to that of the original, however, it's been made much easier to use and much easier to manipulate. You, do, you have multiple positions and you can, you can add positions as well. We have a lever here that we drop the lever down, we pull the, we pull the piston, and the operating rod and spring. Now, on here we can see the removable piston, which we didn't have on the other one. We again, we don't have gas rings on here. Now we look at the, take a look at the piston. And we have two gas ports. We have a standard, which is the smaller port, and a larger, which is for adverse flux, more gas in. And then we have the third position it's going to have is uh, gas cutoff. Now it's been found with these things being over gas that was suppressed use that uh, often it's time you would you want to do some adjustments for yourself. You're going to want to add some gas port sizes which you could have a gunsmith who could drill you another, another position or another gas port hole that was a proper size for use was suppressed. Uh, so you do have the ability to have uh, you know an additional position put on this. So while we have this apart, we're going to talk a little bit about 922R compliance uh, for uh, bringing these guns into the U.S. 
In order for these rifles to be manufactured and sold in the United States with all these imported parts, we have to have a certain amount of parts that are American made. Um, and that's exactly what CZ had to do to bring in the, uh, the or to produce the 16 inch rifles. Now the pistols, as the pistols came in, they came in as pistols so they could have all check parts. But in order to turn that into an SBR, we had to have those uh, those parts and we had to wait until they introduced the American uh, commercial version of the rifle, which is the 16 inch barrel version that we see right here. Now the rifle that you see here is the Bren 2 carbine. We have an American rifle. Uh, we have specifically designed for the commercial market. You have most of your parts that are coming in from the Czech Republic, but you do have American made parts. And those parts are what we had to have in a kit to insert into the, uh, the pistol to be able to make it an SBR utilizing the proper parts. So those parts would include an American made gas piston, op rod. You would see it stainless steel versus the part that came with it, uh, which, is, which is in the black. Same part, American made. Handguard. The handguards where this is going to get a little bit interesting. The original handguard that came on here, uh, the two had, the Bren 2M had two slots for M-Lock, uh, the ones that came in, the early ones came into the country. And that was that was great. Well, now we go into the 2S, uh, 2MS. Now we have what's referred to as a modular handguard. Well, that only had one and it was completely useless. I was able to get a hold of a company called HB Industries. HB Industries manufactures uh, American-made handguards with two, two and a quarter slots. And this, uh, basically, you, you took apart the one that was on the MS. The MS was manufactured of multiple components. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was an unbelievable amount of components to take it apart. And I slid this one on there. There's two versions available. This one here has the uh, just the slots for you to have a screw to put in flashlights, and you have one that has the M-Lock. Uh, there was only one negative aspect to this when I put this on. And that negative aspect was it covered up the lever, and so I was unable to, uh, it was very difficult to remove the, uh, the operating rod for, for maintenance. Well, with the 922R compliance kit came the model that you see right here. Once you remove that handguard with all those parts, the new uh, part that came with CZ uh, with the 922R compliance kit, American made, slid right on, put your bolts in there, you were, you were good to go. And the next part that it came with was the, dis the disconnector. Uh, this connector was American made. This is the one that I removed. This is the, uh, the check one. Uh, so I had, to, I had to drop in the American made disconnector. And the other two parts that were considered American would be just your, 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 uh, your caps that would hold on your, your hand guard into place. And those are American made as well. So those were the parts that were being at the 922R kit. Now these 922R kits are very, very rare. Uh, the prices could go up to $500 depending on what you see. The stock was the most, uh, most, the most important part to try to find. But the 922R compliant kits, for those of you who did buy, buy the MS and the M pistols, you can convert those to SBRs and have your proper check parts uh, as long as you have these proper Amer American made uh, 922R compliant parts. So for reassembly, we drop the uh, the piston back into the gas valve. Drop the uh, operating rod onto the piston. And all we got is push it down on our toggle switch. We have position uh, three, which is going to be gas cutoff. Position two. And this is going to be your normal, then you have one. Now, the 7.62 by 39 versions, which we will switch, which you do find available as well in pistols. Uh, I have yet to see one that's made uh, in, the Ameri in the US configuration. They're all going to be pistols, and you're going to have to short barrel or put a brace on them. The barrels may or may not have uh, bayonet lugs on them. Uh, this, this pistol, as it came in, did have the bayonet lug on it. This is the 5.56 version. We also take a look at the uh, pistols came with a standard check uh, flash suppressor. We take a look at the, the, the 16-inch carbine. Now we're going to start seeing some of those differences uh, between the military gun versus the, uh, the commercial gun. Reassembly, very simple.
Now we can drop in our charging handle on right or left hand side. Again, I'm going to put it back on the uh, left hand side. Forward. Now we're going to take our recoil spring. We have to make sure that the recoil spring is in the right position. Receiver. And there we have the pistol converted to an SBR. I have to say I was very impressed with the uh, short. It only took about three weeks for me to get my tax stamp back on this one. So it looks like ATS doing a pretty good job on these SBRs and in, in these forms. Uh, getting these done now. Suppressors is a whole different ball game. Uh, my last suppressor has taken me uh, six months, but I've had a, I've had two SBRs done, and they've all been two to three weeks. So now we're going to take a look at the newest rifle for commercial use. Now, released at the 2020 SHOT Show, uh, we have now the, the, the Bren 2 MS carbine. Now, for probably the most detailed uh, outlook on these, I definitely would recommend you take a look at uh, Michiko William Trotter's uh, reviews. He's got several reviews that go into an extreme depth, more than I could ever hope to come up with, uh, on the development and the changes. He has access to all the different models. And he wasn't too fond of this. Um, and we're going to take a look at it, and I certainly see where he's coming from with some of it uh, because of the modifications. The rifle that we see here is not the military version. Uh, this rifle was modified in handguards in the gas system um, to be a, a commercial-type rifle. The changes really are not uh, at all in the lower part of the rifle. Um, the all this all everything from the handguard back uh, is the same as the is the two MS where the changes are uh, comes in, in the gas system which we're going to take a look at. So taking a look at the carbine, we're looking at a 16 inch barrel, and we take a look at the uh, muzzle device. This is the muzzle brake that comes on uh, all of these rifles. As you can see, we have an AK74 type uh, way it's open and such. It's held on uh, with the set with the uh, crush washer. This is it's horrendous. Um, uh, the, the muzzle blast is loud. It certainly does a great job as far as recoil is concerned, but this rifle doesn't really have enough recoil to uh, to, to make it worthwhile. But uh, this is the same thing that FN did with the, with the SCAR-16 and SCAR-17. They gave these muzzle brakes on there rather than more of a proper flash suppressor. Uh, so if this was my rifle, I'd change that up. If this is a teeny rifle, this is going back, so I didn't bother left it as it was. But you can see the difference between the pistol uh, with, with the Czech military flash suppressor versus the muzzle brake, the barrel. This is, I'm not going to say it's a heavy barrel, uh, but I will definitely say it's a heavy contour barrel, uh, which really changes the balance of the rifle. Uh, when you take a look at the carbine, uh, which is basically the, the Czech military issue, it's very, very well balanced. This gives you a much more uh, front-heavy rifle because the back of it is all, is all uh, very lightweight. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of the details on this one. Uh, for disassembly, uh, this is no different than anything else. This is the aluminum magazine. Uh, when I received the pistol, uh, my pistol came with uh, the Czech polymer magazines. The rifles that are coming out now are coming with the... Um, the DNH Tactical Magazines, which are Czech military issue. We're not going to go into any detail on the uh, pistol grip assembly because this is identical. Now, again, like we talked about the 922R compliance, everything you see here is Czech on this pistol grip assembly or this, this lower receiver module, but the disconnector, uh, that had to be changed out for 922R. The stock assembly, just like we uh, did on the my SBR. Looking at the stock, as we see here, this is an American-made, basically identical to that of the Czech stock made in the USA. So it's part of the 922R. Remove our operating spring. Again, same bolt carrier group as the uh, as the carbine, where it's totally dis disassembled. You can disassemble it. We're going to remove the gas system here because what we want to show you is. The fact that uh, this carbine was developed uh, as a commercial gun, not for military use, or not off the off the Czech military design. Now 
Now, both the Type A and B um, Bren 2 uh, carbines used by the Czech military use a standard operating rod, and we can see the size of it. Well, for the use with the 16-inch uh, barrel, they redesigned the gas system with a much longer operating rod. So your gas system is not the same. The balance is much different. Uh, it was changed with the use of the heavier barrel. You do have more of a, uh, I'd say, more of a carbine length versus a pistol length. Uh, gas system for as far as the location. So it was heavily modified. These are all American. This is all American parts. Uh, these are made here in the United States. And of course your piston and everything is the same. Uh, you do have the same positions. You have uh, a standard and an adverse setting on here. Uh, you can obviously see the piston settings are a little bit larger on here because you, that's what it requires for the longer barrel. But you have the ability to have, take your gas cutoff to modify it as well to make it work better with a uh, sound suppressor. Now, I have not suppressed either one of these yet. Uh, I will be putting a, a suppressor on uh, the, the pistol at some point. And there's a video that was put out by uh, Military Arms Channel where he had taken a look at the piston systems on the Bren, and he had shown that uh, you know by putting a you know modified uh, gas port in there, that's going to be a little bit uh, smaller uh, than the standard, gives you a much better performance with uh, sound suppressors, and also the gun in general. Uh, these guns are over-gassed. Um, there's no, when you look at the 805 and the Bren 2, they're very heavily gassed guns. Uh, they can certainly function uh, reliably with a lot less, uh, less, and it gives you less recoil, less wear on the firearm, and also you have your ammunition compatibility issues. Um, over-gassed guns tend to do better with a wider variety of ammunition. However, uh, with uh, normal ammunition, it tends to beat the guns up. Um, it's, so it's not necessary. So there is some work that can be done, but you want to have a competent gunsmith uh, who knows how to do, who knows how to, you know, use uh, drills and whatnot and lays and so on and forth to make modifications to these kinds of things. Of course, with a longer uh, upper receiver, you have longer handguards. So we have five slots here on the bottom. We have some on the top as well, really to, to mount uh, the flashlights on the on the top edge here. Um, it is a cold hammer forged barrel, but um, uh, again, it's not the military barrel. Uh, this is uh, solely a commercial rifle, and it's not cheap. You're looking at nearly two thousand dollars right now uh, for these at this point. And these are also uh, unicorns. These are very hard to get a hold of. For reassembly, to reassemble the gas system, it's again very similar, not identical to that of the other one. Of course, there's no bayonet lugs and such. Piston goes into the gas valve. And slides right over the operating rod. There's a flat that will slide into. And the top position where it's where it's straight up, that is your normal or your normal setting. Dropping our bolt carrier group. You need to be careful when you insert your spring that it's in the right position. You also make sure you get it in the proper hole. We basically you have the two where where you have it um, dished in. That's what's going to go in. From there, we're going to drop in our handguard. There we have it. So look at the the, car, the carbine. We we'll go over some of the specifications for it. Again, five five six millimeter uses to nag magazines. Uh, we do have the replaceable magazine well with a replaceable barrel. You can change you can you can change this to the seven point six two by thirty nine. All of the American American rifles that are made now are the, the MS, which has the modular handguard, so you can go with the M-Lock system. The rifles that we're seeing for the Czech Army are still using the 1913 rail. The barrel, 16-inch cold hammer forge barrel, half by 28, heavy profile. When you take a look at the barrel thicknesses on these two, again, the barrel thickness that you see on the, uh, the Bren 2 MS uh, pistol here, or SBR, this is actual Czech military. And you're looking at a 0.555 diameter uh, on the, on that barrel. You're looking at the the, this, the the commercial rifle. You're looking at a much larger one with a 0.695. So uh, you have definitely a uh, heavier barrel. 
Your weight, uh, you're looking at 7.3 pounds for as far as overall length, 35.6 pounds, fully extended, uh, 20 inches with it folded. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to the range and we're going to see how these two shoot.
Now you saw some shooting footage of this being shot as a pistol with a pistol brace, as well as you saw it being shot with uh, in its SBR configuration. I really have to say that uh, the Bren 2 MS carbine, this has become uh, very quickly one of my favorite firearms that I own. Um, right after we switched over and got the S at SBR and got the proper stock on it, the overall feel of it changed. You know, utilization of the pistol brace, uh, you know, first off is a pistol that comes with this end cap, which will accept the uh, receiver extension for an M4 carbine, which is, you know, I just dropped in that uh, with this S with this uh, SB tactical uh, brace. This rattled like crazy and it was relatively short. Uh, it, it didn't give the rifle a very good feel. And also utilizing it as a pistol without a stock, that completely sucked. Um, when these guns first came into the country, uh, the original two MS pistols, uh, William, William and uh, Michiko sent me one of the pistols and we shot it. And I shot it in a position without a stock and then with uh, just one of the regular old braces on it. I can't say as I cared for it much at all. Uh, when I got this one, I really fell in love with it. Uh, and that's when we decided to SBR it. It took me a long time to be able to get the 922R kit. It took me you know, several weeks to try to find track or track one down. Got it. Uh, got it. Uh, you know, the S at SBR got my tax stand back, put everything on. When it was put together, this gun is solid. There's no rattling. There's nothing. Uh, you know, looking at the design, very, very well thought out. Recoil was, was beautiful. Accuracy, as you see from the targets, uh, was very, very acceptable. Uh, we've tried several different kinds of ammunition in it. Uh, worked very, very well. Now the 2MS carbine, uh, you know, we shot uh, several hundred rounds out of it. Uh, certainly uh, no reliability issues whatsoever. Uh, it was, you know, it shoots very, very well. It's different. Uh, the, the way that the balance is on it with that heavier barrel uh, is different. You know, uh, for somebody who doesn't want to SBR it, you know, uh, I'm more of a, I like the military configurations, uh, you know, and I'll spend the extra 200 bucks for a tax stamp to get it to look like I think it's supposed to. Uh, no problem with that, uh, which is what I did with the pistol. Uh, for those of you who want a shooter, um, you certainly can't go wrong with this. If you were to compare this to a SCAR, this is by far a better deal uh, and just as good of a rifle than, than, trying, to, than trying to buy a SCAR. Um, out of the box, the trigger, although the trigger is not as nice as the original 805, this trigger is excellent uh, for a military grade trigger. Uh, at some point, I would expect to see maybe some match grade triggers come out for it as these become more popular. Uh, hopefully in the current political climate, we're not going to have any more any bans anytime soon. So they're going to be able to keep bringing these, uh, these, these parts into the country so they can assemble them into rifles here with uh, the American made components. There are other companies who are starting to make a lot of accessories for these. Um, k and Precision is a company who's done a lot with the 805, uh, and hopefully they're going to do some more with the uh, with the with the Bren 2. Well, doing some research uh, on the original kits, there is one company that made 1913 rails very similar to that uh, of what is used by the, the Czech Army. Uh, unfortunately, by the time I found out about these, it was too late. I already had taken my original uh, handguard off. Uh, and this is for use with the standard uh, 2MS uh, issue handguard, which all you're doing is you're replacing the one rail and placing these on the three, six, and nine o'clock positions. Uh, again, it's Preston Engineering. Any of you guys who have any unmolested uh, 2MS and 2M pistols, you are able to swap out that with these rails to give you the standard check uh, 1913 rail. Again, that's, that was by Preston Engineering. So overall thoughts on the uh, the Bren 2 series, I am, I am extremely fond and I'm definitely sold. Um, I had had uh, the opportunity to see, you know, the Bren 805s being used over in um, in Jordan at the King Abdel Special Operations Training Center. There was a Czech Special Forces unit over there that was using uh, them in the kind of competitions. These guys were quite fond of them. Um, and, you know, this was uh, earlier on uh, where before we, you know, we saw a lot of the use of the, the Bren 2s. The Bren 2 is what's used now. Uh, you're looking at the Slovakian army again. You had, Czech, you had Czechoslovakia when they split off the Czech Republic and, uh, and Slovakia. Slovakia, for the longest time, was still using the VZ-58. Uh, they had bought small numbers of uh, 805s from the Czech Republic, and now they're starting to buy some of the Bren 2s. The switch over from the Bren 805 to the Bren 2 was definitely a good change. There was a lot of things that were fixed. Uh, it definitely made it a better rifle. Uh, and I think it's, good. it's a very valid rifle uh, for anybody who's looking for one. Again, we're not looking at inexpensive rifles, but you're also not looking at cheaply made rifles. You're looking at a company who's been doing this for hundreds of years, uh, who has experience in manufacturing and development, and it was all done in-house, which is probably one of the things that, that led it to be the next Czech rifle over the SCAR. Um, just as good of a rifle, less cost. So I do hope you all enjoy this video. It's a little bit longer, but we wanted to cover a lot of information. Uh, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.